Well, good good morning to all the people who have joined us, and I believe so far we should have Bulgaria, Ukraine, Moscow, and the Czech Republic. So we'll go ahead and start. This will be our first UNESCO project. We're talking about historical uh, significant uh, things in our individual countries. Uh, my name is Michael Cunningham, and I'm located here in Dell Valley, Texas. And we're recording this today, so this should be a, a pretty special deal. We'll be joined by two schools in Jordan later, as well as the schools I, I told you about. And I believe we're also going to be joined by uh, a couple other schools as well. So as they join in, it uh, be very important to do. We'll start out our first one with the Czech Republic. And if everybody could mute their microphones, or I could try to do that here, except for the Czech Republic, we'll go right to them, and they'll start out first. Czech Republic, go ahead. Hello, my name is Kate, this is Eva, Daniel, and Simona. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. And we are students from the Czech Republic, which is located in Central Europe, so Germany and Austria. We have studied at our grammar school in the city of České Budějovice for five years. Yet the building itself, uh, as well as the tradition of our grammar school, uh, is much longer. Uh, last year we celebrated its 110th anniversary. Uh, our school is a three-floor building with an attic, as you can see in the picture in uh, the presentation. Um, you might think our school is old, uh, but the um, gorgeous reconstructed pink facade, as you can see in the picture, is uh, just as amazing as the inside part of our school, uh, which is created in Art Nouveau, uh, which is a style um, that uses uh, plant or flower uh, shapes and uh, just as uh, scarling lines. So... Uh, the architecture of our building is pretty amazing and interesting. And our school also has a great position in, this, uh, in our town center, so we can go wherever we want after school. We prepared a present. I'm sorry, it's our ringing. Uh, so we prepared a presentation about the famous sites of uh, Czech Republic, which are uh, a part of UNESCO World he Heritage. Some of them date back to 6th century. Um, have you any questions? Do you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions now? Go ahead. Okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, let us start uh, next presentation. Hello, my name is Eva, and uh, I would like to tell you something interesting about our city. Uh, Česká Budějovice is the biggest city of the South Bohemian region, uh, lying on the confluence of two Czech rivers, the Vltava and the Malše. Uh, the number of citizens uh, reaches nearly 100,000. And uh, next year, uh, we are celebrating 705th uh, anniversary of the foundation by the Czech king Przemysl Otakar II in 1275. They claim on the official websites that everybody would like to live in České Budějovice. Do you know why? 
Tourists usually, the Japanese, admire our historical sites. I can recommend you sitting in a cafe in the unique square of the size of one hectare. You can admire the near Renaissance and Baroque arcade houses fringing the square. The square boasts of the Baroque Samson's fountain topped by a statue of Samson. The Renaissance town hall with unique chimes chanting every hour was nicely reconstructed. But there's much more to see. For example, the black tower in the close neighborhood. It used to be a watchtower, however, now it's just a tourist attraction. You can climb up uh, 2,025 stairs to have a breathtaking view of the whole city. And I can't forget to invite you to Masne Krame. The typical Czech cuisine is served in this medieval restaurant. You should try to order Budweiser beer, which is brewed right in our city. And that's all. Do you have any questions for, for me? A any questions at all? No, so uh, another presentation. Thank you very much. Hi guys, I would like to uh, say you something about another beautiful place in the Czech Republic uh, and it's a town called Český Krumov. I dare to say that Český Krumov is one of the <laughs> is anything wrong? No, no, keep on going. I'll, I'll okay. uh, thanks. I can mute it. Oh. I, I dare to say that Chesky Kromov is one of the most visited places in the Czech Republic. People come here to be amazed by the historical town. Which was built in the 13th century. It spreads on the banks of the river Vltava, meandering down the town and creating unrepeatable breathtakingness. Can I continue? Can I carry on? Go ahead and continue. I'm sorry. We're trying to get them to mute and I'm having a hard time. Hello, Mark. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, but you need to go mute while the Czech Republic finishes it, okay? Okay, hopefully that works. Just one second. I'm trying my best here. Okay. Český Kromov spreads on the banks of the river Vltava, meandering down the town and creating unrepeatable, breathtaking sceneries. The dominance of the town is Krumov Castle, which you can see on these two pictures. And it's accounted for the second biggest castle in the country. But that's not all. You can find here also a historical brewery, gothic castle in the center of the town, or a unique revolving theater on this photo. In the past, the medieval town profit, profited from the local grapevine, and the tourists can visit it even in the present, but they don't uh, mind graffiti there anymore. And uh, I have got two interesting facts for the end. Uh, firstly, uh, there was film an American movie hostel. Hostel. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Do you know him? Do, do you know it? No. Well, uh, it wasn't a successful movie. And sec secondly, the castle is protected by a moat where real bears live. Real bears. You can't see her uh, in this picture in the right corner. Visitors enjoy watching them, especially at the time of feeding or mating. That's all from me, and I would like to uh, pass the microphone to my colleague.
Hello, my name is Jane. I want to tell you some information about uh, the a town called Hluboká nad Vltavou. Yeah, Hluboká nad Vltavou is a town near České Budějovice in the uh, South Bohemian region. It spreads on the hill above both sides of the Vltava River. Even if this small town has a population of uh, 5,000 people, it can pride itself on three castles. Hluboká nad Vltavou castle was uh, founded in the 13th century. Within the history, this magnificent romantic Gothic castle was uh, three times rebuilt. The last reconstruction was uh, inspired by the royal castle of uh, Windsor in England. In the, in the interior, there was a unique carvings uh, which were made by local craftsmen. Uh, there are also rich collections of paintings, furniture and dishes uh, and this is the reason why the castle interior belongs to the richest uh, in the Czech Republic. And uh, in this picture uh, there is uh, the royal castle of uh, Windsor in England. I have been, I have been mentioned. The castle is uh, surrounded by a castle garden in French style and by a castle park in English style. French style means uh, everything is exactly symmetric. Uh, neat sandy paths went between ornamental beds. And uh, on the contrary, the English park uh, resembles wild nature where symmetry in is uh, unnatural. And uh, there are examples of uh, castle garden in style in uh, Villandry and uh, Versailles. Just for your, uh, just for your illustration. Wow. And uh, yes, and uh, there is a castle park in English style, the Temple of Ancient Virtue, still. And ev uh, in Hluboka, there is uh, uh, everything is com combined and uh, during the day many, many tourists uh, join the castle tours in uh, but in uh, summer evenings the castle court turns into the venue for summer theater music festival uh, look at please please look at uh, this photo that we in a company in musical Casanova uh, we enjoy it uh, every performance uh, very very well. And uh, that's and uh, the former riding hall was transformed into a picture gallery. Uh, it was named uh, Alshova South Bohemian Gallery to honor one of the most famous South Bohemian artists. And uh, and in the close neighborhood of the castle, there is a small mansion called Tekel, which was turned into the grandest hotels in the South Bohemian region. Originally, servants of Schwarzenberg dynasty were accommodated there. And uh, the dominant of a tiny square is a beautiful neo-Gothic church, you can see there. Over the lodge, uh, it is one of the most famous hunting lodges in the Czech Republic because uh, there are rich collections of arms and deer trophies. In the close neighborhood, there is a zoo which was opened in 1939 and uh, offers education and relax for families with children. And uh, when I was young, uh, we visited with my family a uh, zoo very often. And because of I know the names of bears, it is Ben and Dick. And uh, now I'm wearing a t-shirt from this zoo. <laughs> there is a t-shirt. <laughs> and I have got also uh, souvenirs from this zoo. And I don't know, you can see it. Can you see it? Yes, I'll try the... <laughs> <laughs> okay, and yeah. Uh, please, uh, can you can you tell me? Uh, can I can I say dear trophies or or is it is it better or can I say uh, dear panoply? Panoply. 
Travis or Benaply? I think the first. Yeah, thanks. And that's that's all. And I pass the microphone to my colleague. Hello, my name is Ilana and my name is Kaya. And we have one question for you. Have you ever been to Prague? No. No. You should come. And do you know something about Prague? A uh, little bit. I had some relatives there about in the 1200s. So we will tell you our information about Prague. So Prague is the capital city of the Czech Republic and it's one of the most beautiful European cities. So let's talk about the most visited places and monuments in Prague. I think everyone knows the famous Charles Bridge over the Vltava River. When you are walking along, don't forget to view the sand statues framing the bridge on both sides. You can see it in the picture and on the bridge is usually a lot of tourists. On the hill above the Vltava, stands, above the Vltava River stands Prague Castle. It's the seat of our president. And in the premise of Prague Castle, you can discover the beauty of St. Vitus Cathedral. This Gothic cathedral with stunning stained glass windows houses tombs of many Bohemian kings. This all is the reason why the visit here is really unforgettable. And you can see it in the picture. One of the most beautiful historical and cultural monuments in Prague is the National Theatre, where you can admire its richly decorated interiors as well as enjoy watching a play, ballet or opera. Every hour crowds of tourists gather in the historical old town square to watch the unique 600-year-old astronomical clock built in the tower of the old town hall. Despite its age, it still works. This is the picture at the right side. Prague, a Jewish town, attracts loads of tourists tracing the mysteries of the old synagogue from the 12th century. This is the second picture. However, not only historical monuments are worth seeing in Prague. The modern building called Dancing House will provoke your imagination. Do you know why the building is called Dancing House? No. <laughs> Actually, uh, as you can see, the structure of its building looks uh, like the building where really dance. Yeah. <laughs> like a dancing <laughs> cat. <laughs> and unfortunately, there isn't any dancing school inside, but only offices. That's all from Prague. Goodbye. Hello, uh, my name is Barbara and I will be talk about, talking about uh, the Twin Hunt Villa in Brno. So Brno is the second largest city in the Czech Republic in West Bohemia. One of the UNESCO monuments which makes Brno famous is named the Tugendhat Villa. Uh, this wall was designed for Greta and Fritz Tugendhat in 1928. Its construction was completed in 1930. The, the modern building uh, was completed in... The modern building uh, was designed by a significant uh, German architect uh, Ludwig Mies uh, van der Rohe uh, and he uh, became famous for building gorgeous skyscrapers and offices in Chicago too. Uh, he nicknamed uh, his, uh, do you know this ar architect? Yes, very famous uh, here in the States. 
and he nicknamed his ar architecture Skin and Bones. Uh, two years ago, this villa and its surrounding garden were reconstructed and its e equipment uh, restored. Uh, now it looks the same as in 1930. Uh, uh, the building looks like uh, the contemporary architecture. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Isn't it? <laughs> And in the basement, there are technical amenities, for example, a unique air conditioning and a boiler room. Uh, the first floor contains a lounge uh, with a conservatory and a terrace, place where the whole family were relaxing, a white kitchen full of the most important dishes, and rooms for the staff. Uh, on the second floor, there is front door, uh, which opens a passage uh, to the terrace, uh, rooms for the parents, uh, children, and their nanny. And uh, the villa soon became an icon of mo modernism for its simple and practical design, uh, offering the <laughs> offering the owners much comfort. Uh, that's all for me. Do you have any questions? I, I don't believe so. Go ahead. Oh, I will pass uh, the microphone to my mate. <laughs> Hello, my name is Josephine, and I would like to tell you something about Alamout. Alamout is a city which is located in Moravia, in the east of the Czech Republic. The, vis the visitors of Alamout, most of all, admin pledge column which was erected in one of Alamont squares 300 years ago. Because it is a unique historical monument, it was enlisted in UNESCO World Heritage Fund. I think it was in year 2000. Uh, yes, 2000. <laughs> the statue of Virgin Mary tops the column. The base is decorated with sculptures of eight stands, the patrons of Alamont. Uh, in the same square is a gold-plated astronomical clock. You can see it on the picture. And Alamout is part of its six baroque fountains and other church, chapels, and as well as the castle, which stands on the hill above Alamout. It's all from me, and do you have any questions? No, go ahead. We're, we're going to need as much time as possible, so let's go to the next presentation. Can you, you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Uh huh. So, uh, do you think we should interrupt now uh, the presentation and to leave the rest of the presentation for, let's say, the second uh, uh, performance? Yes. yes. Uh, if you don't mind, can, can we do that? Yeah. And then we'll go no. to Bulgaria, and then we'll go to yes. Uh, that because I think they're they're kind of pressed on some. Yeah, time. yeah, because we still have some time in uh, the schedule, so I think it's fine. Is it? Yes, that'd be yeah. great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's go to Bulgaria, and let me mute. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay, just a minute, please. Okay, hello from Bulgaria. <laughs> hello from Bulgaria. This is. I'm looking to it. My name is Yanni, and this is my friend Eric. Hello. And we are going to talk to you. We are going to talk to you about a Bulgarian tradition, uh, which we celebrate on the first of March. And we. Uh, okay. Uh, it's. <laughs> uh, 
It's called Baba Marta. In our Great language. Mama March. Great Mama March. It's called Grandma March. Yes, and it, in our language we call it Baba Marta. And uh, we wear... Um, just show it. This is what we wear. Can you can you see it? Yeah. Uh, bracelet. Yes, yes, it's a white, white and red bracelet. Okay. Um. It, what? Yes, yes, it's made of thread, uh, uh, cotton thread. Uh, we wear it for healthiness and for luck. So, mm. <laughs> okay. So, uh, first of all, we would like to hear if there are any questions. Does anyone have any questions if they have unmute? How long do you wear the bracelets for? Well, well, we said for healthiness and for luck, and to wear, we wear... Check, check. Uh, so, <laughs> we, um, we stop wearing them. When, uh, no, well, we stop wearing them when uh, we see a stork. Until we don't see a stork, we, we don't stop wearing them. And oh, okay. when we see a stork, we... Hang we put him them. On a tree or a bush. We hang him them on a tree or a bush for again for a luck or something. Uh, yes. This is traditional it's and it's every it's a meat. Yeah, Grandma March is a meat which is uh, from about our folklore uh, very many centuries ago, and uh, it's it is how he say for health is for luckiness. And it's some kind of traditional which um, everyone becomes do it, do it. Everyone becomes one. Everyone do that every year. We As give it question. one another. That uh, Martinici in Bulgaria called. It, it's uh, very nice. Uh, but uh, that's all. <laughs> yeah. So we trade with friends, with family. And uh, that's, again, a part of the tradition. And many people from other countries, when I uh, see them in an original size, they really don't know what it is, but they like it a lot. And uh, I have family in po Poland. Today, we send them every year Martin. It's in, they really like them and uh, wear them very much. Oh, yes. Well, I believe that's all, if someone has questions. Okay. Uh, anyone have any questions? If not, we're going to go to the... Uh, no, we are not. We, we okay, have go ahead. Uh, new teams, but uh, we are ready with this. Oh, hello, I'm Tony, and with me is Emo. <laughs> okay, and we will talk uh, about uh, Forgiveness Day and St. Nicholas, so go ahead. Shovet uh, Eid, also known as Forgiveness, is an important winter spring festival in the Bulgarian folk calendar. The holiday is celebrated seven weeks before Easter, always on Sundays, and lasts for one week, lasts for one week with the performance of different rituals. Uh, every single man shoots a little arrow in the yard of a, the girl he likes. The girl who collects the great numbers of arrows is considered the most admirable. During the week, lasses and ladies swing for health. On Sunday, they light fires, and once burnt, they skip them for health. Then around the fire, people play and sing songs. And the food for Shroff is pie with cheese, boiled eggs, boiled corn, halva with nuts. Uh, it's customary to perform the costumes hamkane, a piece of white halva or a boiled egg. This is tied to a red thread and descends from the ceiling. The oldest members of the family is turning around the stick and the rest, especially the children, are trying to catch the egg or halva with their mouths. However, to um, 
catch it will be safe and sound through the the year. On the shrub, the younger members of the family ask the other the older ones for forgiveness, kissing their hand and pronouncing the traditional words of forgiveness. Forgive me. So the holy day is also known as Forgiveness Day. So yeah. Okay. And okay. Now we're gonna show the traditional. Eric, na tam zavrti. Na tam. Da neka. Just a minute, please. Okay. Okay. So this is how it's done. Uh I don't want it. We call this Amkane. And it is for many things. Okay. So we swing it a bit and then oh. that's what it must happen. Yes. And that's about it. Oh thanks. Okay, so Saint Nicholas. Okay, so Saint Nicholas, fifteen March. Uh, 276 December 343, also called Nicholas of Myra, was a historic 4th century Christian saint and Greek bishop of Myra and Lucia. Because of the many miracles attributed to his intercession, he is also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker. He had a reputation for secret gift giving, such as putting coins in the shoes of those who left them out for him, and this became the model for Santa Claus whose modern name comes from the Dutch Sinterklaas itself from a series of lesions and corruption of the trans transliteration of St. Nicholas. His reputation <clears throat> evolved among the faithful as was common for early Christian saints. In 1087, part of the relics were fortunately translated to Bari in Apulia, Italy. For this reason, he's also known as Nicholas of Bari. The remaining bones were taken to Venice. His feast day is 6 December. The historical Saint Nicholas is commemorated and rever revered among Algican, Catholic, Lutheran, and Orthodox Christians. In addition, some Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, and Reformed churches have been named in honor of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors, mechanics, archers, repentant thieves, children, pound brokers, and students in various cities and countries around Europe. He was also a patron of the Varangian guard of the Byzantine emperors who protected his relics in Bari. And if anybody does have any questions, we're done. Okay, thank you so much. That was very good. Uh, tell us just a little yeah. bit about your school. Thank you. That's from Bulgaria Copyright. Goodbye. Let's see others. Okay, okay. I guess we are going to go to, uh, I think, Moscow and then the Ukraine. So, Moscow, you should be next. Thirteen fifty seven, go ahead. 
Uh, hello, my name is Sofia. This is my classmates, uh, Kate, uh, Maria, Denise, uh, Lisa, and uh, Sofia. Uh, my name is Sofia, and uh, we are we're glad to greet you from Moscow, Russia. Uh, our school is situated in the southeast of Moscow, uh, and it is specialized in English. Hello. Today we are going to tell you about the Lake Baikal. Currently, there are 25 World Heritage Sites in Moscow, in Russia. Uh, five properties are uh, culture and ten are natural. <clears throat> the, most f the most famous of them is the uh, Lake Baikal. I'm sorry. Uh, it was declared in UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1996. A Baikal is a rift lake in the south of Siberia between the Irkutsk Oblast to the northwest and the Buret Republic to the southeast. The Buret had settled the lake shores the long before the 30th century conquest of Chinggis Khan. Uh, Russian fur trades arrived in the 1640s. The Buret have a mystical feelings about this lake. They believe that its water are charmed. This is why they never call a lake uh, on the, the sea or the old man or he. Lake Baikal is most ancient lake on earth. Lakes rarely live uh, longer than a million years, but sacred sea or pearl of Siberia, how it's often called, is more than 25 million years old. For scientists, it's a living laboratory of evolution. Lake Baikal is the deepest lake in the world, measuring 1,637 meters from top to bottom. It sits in the planet's... It sits in the planet's... It sits in the planet's deepest land, depression, uh, where at least three tectonic, tectonic plates tectonic plates meet. These planets are, these planets scrapes each other and uh, make, making lake uh, even wider and deeper. There is a theory that uh, Lake Baikal is the beginning of new ocean. Uh, the lake holds one fifth of the planet's fresh water and is still remarkably clean. The Lake Baikal is one of the most places on the earth, beautiful places on the earth. Everyone who has been to its shores is impressed and charmed by its greater size and unusual might. This wonder of the natural world is very difficult to describe. A Russian writer, Valentin Rasputin, once said, Men does not have enough feeling to respond to this miracle. The waters of the lake are amazingly transparent and they change colors all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, lake Baikal is a living museum of water, animals and plants. Uh, about 1,500 uh, species of animals are endemic. You can see them nowhere else in the world. Uh, it's... Um, uh, also rich uh, in living uh, all on all at all their depths uh, and its uh, cold waters uh, move vertically carrying oxygen uh, even to 1637 meters bottom one mystery about the lake is how uh, nearpa the baikal seal originally came to originally <laughs> originally came to uh, Lake Baikal, it is hundreds of kilometers from any ocean. Uh, uh, Glamyanka, uh, Glamyanka, a transpa transparent uh, glass-like fish, lives only in Lake Baikal. Um, uh, the Omul, uh, Omul uh, uh, an Arctic fish uh, endemic to Lake Baikal is delicious. Many tourists take it uh, smoke omul uh, as a present to their presents and relatives or parents and relatives. Friends and relatives. Uh, <clears throat> the snows of Siberia uh, come to Lake Baikal in early October. Um, 
At the end of October, the lake begins to freeze. In winter, the ice gets very thick, well over a meter. In 1904, during the Russo-Japanese War, a railway track, uh, track was laid across the ice to carry guns to, to the front. By mid-April, the ice begins to, to thaw and the lake becomes so huge that sailors and fish, fishermen he talk of going to sea. The water of the lake can hardly be called warm. In summer, its average uh, temperature is uh, 12 degrees above zero. But many people who go for their first uh, swim in the lake behave as if they had jumped into boiling water. Lake it, uh, the lake is uh, surrounded by beautiful mountains. The Baikal Mountains of North Shore and the Taiga are protected as a national park. Olkhon is the largest uh, of the lake, 27 islands. It's 72 kilometers long and its shape resembles the shape of Lake Baikal. Olkhon is a remarkable conglomeration of all possible landscapes that exist around Baikal. Rolling gra grass steps, deep forests, sand dunes and rocky cliffs. Olkhon is also an important center of shamanism. Shamanka or the shaman's rock is the most famous landmark of the island. According to the legend, it has come, it has some magic power and blocks uh, the entrance to the underground spirit world. The Baikask pulp and pi paper mill was constructed in 1966, directly on the shoreline bleaching paper uh, with chlorine and discharging waste into Baikal. After decades of protest, The plan was closed in November 2008. Russian oil pipelines state company Transneft was planning to build a trunk pipeline that would have come within 800 meters of the lake shore in the zone of substantial seismic activity. Environmental activists in Russia, Greenpeace, Baikal Pipeline Opposition and local citizens were, were strongly opposed Uh, to these plans due to the possibility of an accidental oil spill that might cause significant damage to the environment. Transneft had to move the pipeline away from Baikal so that it won't pass through any federal and republic national reserves. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? If not, we're going to go to the Ukraine So thank you very much, Moscow, and we'll go to Ukraine here and go go ahead, Kiev. Yeah, wait for a minute. Um. Hey, do you hear us? Yes, I can hear you and I can see, see your uh, screen now. So, hi, and we are here from Kiev, and we would like to represent some UNESCO World Heritage, especially from Ukraine. And the first one is uh, Kiev Church Slavra. And uh, it is also known as the Kiev Monastery of the Caves, and it is a historic Orthodox Christian monastery which gave its name to one of the cities districts where it is located in Kiev. Since its foundation is the Cave Monastery in 1051, the Lavra has been a prominent center of the Eastern Orthodox Christianity in Eastern Europe. Together with the St. Sophia Cathedral, it is described as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The monastery complex is considered a separate National Historic Cultural Preserve. The national status, which was granted on 13th of March in 1996, 
the Lavra the also not only located in another part of the city, but is a part of a different national uh, sanctuary than St. Sophia Cathedral. While being a cultural attraction, the monastery is currently active. It was named after one of the seven wonders of Ukraine on 21st of August in 2007, based on voting by experts and the internet community. The Lavra boasts very ancient origins and rapidly became the seat of a community governed by the Abad Saint uh, Theodosius. With the support of the Princess of Kiev, uh, the monastery immediately began to prosper. Uh, debated by the Mongols and Tatars, Lavra was almost entirely rebuilt in the 17th century and upward. A print shop was founded in 1615 and uh, mainly issuing devotional literature and history. The Lavra played a highly important intellectual role. Mm -hmm. These were times of great prosperity uh, where uh, pilgrims uh, flocked to the site and the grounds were filled with numerous Baroque monuments. The clock tower and the refectory church are two of the main landmarks in the monastery mm -hmm. class landscape, totally transformed by the construction of the renovation renovation of numerous churches. Declared a historical and cultural reserve in 1926, the Lavra was very severely damaged in 1941 when its oldest edifice, the uh, Dermitian Cathedral, was almost fully destroyed. Hello, and the next one heritage is St. Sophia's Cathedral. Uh, designed to rival Hagia Sophia in uh, Constantinople, here St. Sophia Cathedral symbolizes the new Constantinople, capital of the Christian Principality of Kiev, which was created in the 11th century in a region, even just after the baptism of St. Vladimir in uh, 988. St. Sophia, a Greek cross church, is one of the major edifice, edifices uh, represent, representing the culture of Eastern Christianity in the 11th century, inspired by Byzantine models. The stylistic features of its decoration were spread throughout Kiev and Russia in the 11th century by the icon painters working in Kiev. Yuvrish's Lavra is of outstanding significance in the Ukrainian national heritage, and the ancient monastic foundation plays a very important role in the spiritual and intellectual life of the Russian world. The construction of St. Sophia Cathedral was begun in the first half of the 11th century, probably in 137 by Yaroslav the Sage. It was meant to replace Kiev's very first church, the Desertina, Our Lady of the Tide, built by his great grandmother, Duchess Olga, in 952. Conceived in opus mixtum with uh, 12 columns dividing the interior into five naves, the church represents a perfect fusion between symbolic image and uh, the big central uh, guilt strongly expressed that it was not dimi uh, diminished in the stirring of the onion domes in the 18th century. A complex of monastic buildings surrounds the church. Built originally of wood in one, uh, 1,600 um, 33 the buildings were destroyed by fire in 1697 and reconstructed in stone. The four-story bell tower, overhung by a gilt onion cupola, the metropolitan house, the refectory, the west gate, the tower at the south, south entrance, the brothers' building, and the infant of which and uh, sorry and the seminary were built. The stone and sand, uh encircled these buildings, which are typical of Ukrainian Arab uh, style, the influence of which can also be seen in contemporary restor restoration work on the city. 
And now I would like to represent to you our uh, uh, our art, Petrukivka art. The recognition of Petrukivka art is in the list of UNESCO World Culture Heritage. Opens new opportunities for Ukraine to showcase its cultural potential to the rest of the world. Founded in the 18th century as talisman painting to protect people from evil, Petrukivka art is known for its bright natural elements such as flowers and birds. Combining symbolism and baroque, Petrukivka art has some part of the distinctive Ukrainian culture. In the town of Petrukivka in eastern Ukraine, many locals still rely on these crops to make a living. Modern artists paint uh, utensils, clothes, bags using this technology and also apply it in body art. Ukraine's Petrukivka art was uh, among 25 entires added to the world intangible culture heritage list during the 8th UNESCO Intergovernmental Committee session in Baku, Azerbaijan. The people of the village of Petrukivka decorate their living uh, quarters, household belongings, and musical instruments with a style of ornamental painting that is characterized by fantastic flowers and other natural elements based on careful observation of the local flora and fauna. This art is rich in symbolism. The rooster stones of fire and spiritual awakening, while birds represent light, harmony, and happiness. In all belief, the paintings protect people from sir and evil. Local people, and in particular women of all ages, are involved in this folk art tradition. Every family has at least one fractioneer making decorative painting an integral part of daily existence in the community. The painting traditions, including the symbolism of the ornamental elements, are transferred, viewed, and enhanced from one generation to another. Local schools at all levels, uh, from preschool to college, teach the fundamental of vertical Petrukivka decorated painting with all children given the opportunity to study it. Thank you for your attention. But it's not the end. Um, we have another pupil uh, who will show you how to paint with this art. Uh, so, hello, and now I'm going to show you what Petrukivka looks like in uh, reality. I'll show you. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Good? Yes, we hear yeah. you. So, and I'll show you some tricks which, uh, which uh, you can use painting Petrukivka. In my hands uh, is homemade brush, but instead of squirrel's wool or pony's wool, we fundamentally have to use cat's wool. That's why uh, the strokes and lines and details look so gracefully and accomplished. Um, and uh, for painting uh, Petrukivka, you have to use gouache paint. Uh, consistency of colors should be like uh, sur cream, I mean thick. And now uh, we're having not finished picture uh, composition. And now step by step we'll fulfill it um, and accomplish this small composition using some tricks. Uh, first of all, we will paint a um, snowball tree using our fingers. So I take a red color, you see, and uh, dip my finger into this color and make something like a fingerprint on this page. Wait a second. So, and now you see snowball tree. Also, you can use it, uh, this technique of fingerprints, when you paint other uh, berries or something else, or even flowers. So, 
you see it in Chinese. <laughs> then, using our unusual brush, we will paint the leaves. So now we see a leaf near this snowball tree. Uh, then, of course, you can mix any color, uh, some um, any colors, and uh, to reach a new new uh, colors. And now, using yellow color, we'll paint a flower. Wait a second. There is a special way of pressing this uh, brush and changing the direction of pressing. You change uh, an ornament, uh, so um, you have to study a lot to, to do it really perfect. And uh, it's not enough only one lesson to um, teach how to do this. So, and now, uh, when I showed you, I would like to uh, show you how it looks like in reality. So, you see, there is a, a flower ornament, then uh, animal ornament. You see? Yes. Very pretty. And then, and then flower ornament on the plate made of wood also um cascade you see yes and the decorative the creative board you see how precious this ornament look so and now uh, maybe some uh, somebody have any questions? Anyone have any questions? You can unmute and ask a question. Uh, how long have you been learning English? Uh, once again, please. So how long I'm have you been learning English? How how long <laughs> have you been learning English? Uh, maybe 10 years, 10, okay. 8. <laughs> How old are you? I'm, I'm 15. Hello. And I'm studying English uh, during the last 10 years. So, been very enjoyed your presentation. Uh huh. Thanks a lot. We enjoyed your presentation. Thanks a lot. How long have you been painting? Uh, how long? Is uh, I'm not a professional paint uh, artist, and uh, indeed I was training during the last uh, three days, and I was all the time I was practicing, for, um, and I was changing directions of uh, my brush, and then I was uh, pushing it in different ways, and uh, it's very interesting, and I want to say that. Um, if uh, you have such a crazy idea to uh, copy someone's ornaments or composition, there is no sense in doing this. Because when you really enjoy doing something and you uh, strongly believe that you'll reach that long wanted result, and uh, your mind can help itself from creating and making up something new and extraordinary. So we cannot copy any ornaments because our imagination is something incredible and uh, you cannot, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what else. So, any questions? You do a very good job. I remember the eggs from last time, too. So, uh, you use a, do a lot of different uh, paintings of, uh, of things. So, we really do appreciate all the good work you've done there. And also, if you want to see, um, one hour ago, I was trying to paint, and you see... How much I was trying, I was trying, and uh, also the, there is a finished picture I wanted to show you today. 
That's very good. Thank, thank you very much, Kev. And then we're going to go to Jordan, and Jordan's going to have a presentation for us. Go ahead, Jordan. Unmute and thank you. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing fine. The picture is wonderful today. It's very beautiful art, and uh, my student asked, uh, is uh, the heritage art in all schools or in just uh, an art school? Uh, Katrina, could you guys unmute and explain what kind of a school you are? <laughs> you can learn Petrikivka not only in a definitely art school, uh, definitely in an art school. You can just open the internet or just to look uh, through the video lesson, and then of course it won't be that you wanted result, but. And our school, um, no, it's not, our school is not uh, art, uh, it's a humanities lyceum. And uh, in our school, there is a teacher uh, who um, really, know, really know how to paint with Rikipa. And uh, during uh, last... Uh, three days, he was... Very beautiful, thank you. Okay. We are from Zin uh, Sharaf Secondary School from Jordan. Okay, just say, let me try to mute these other people a second. We can't hear you very well, so you're going to have to mute. Okay, excuse me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jordan. We are from uh, secondary school, uh, Zin Sharaf Secondary School from Jordan. We, uh, my students want to uh, uh, tell you about uh, Karak Castle in uh, my city. We have uh, a presentation there. Rama and Baraa and Haifa. How to save the heritage and development. Every, every size city has historical roads Cultural heritage represented reflecting to refer city of the culture, heritage of the people of the level making cause to maintain in the develop it. What are the types of this heritage and how we contribute to keep it? Combined heritage in Karak, several types oral tradition uh, and includes uh, uh, history uh, and music and uh, folk dance, written, uh, written heritage, document and uh, hist uh, historical text, built heritage, uh, ancient city, artifacts uh, such as jewelry, uh, salt and ancient weapon and other household has found preserved in museum. There are several, uh, there are several in institution and uh, and men and men is to ensure the protection of heritage, heritage, uh, heritage preserve, preservation and development sta state state fairs to bring primary response responsibility to maintain. The I wonder what's happening. And developed through, developed through to um, uh, develop, uh, develop. Why don't uh, show the presentation? Uh, can you see the presentation? Yeah, uh, when you had the laptop yeah. up, we could see it. Throw the 
Ministry of Culture and um, and its uh, directors, directors of culture heritage, the directors of art. If the oil, the oil of share, excuse me a second. If you go to screen share, everyone can see it's on your screen. You can share your screen with everyone if you if that's your computer you're using. If you go to screen share on the bottom, everyone that can see what's on your computer, can, everyone in the conference can see your video too, the picture. But keep on going, I'm sorry. In preserving the heritage and development, appropriation of, uh, of money of uh, man, monument in the uh, region and includes includes and includes effect effect in the region uh, of the region say the uh, ex, 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 exact monument monument on honor We choose the teacher and the archaeologist important in Karak a Karak Castle. Castle is a fortified uh, habitat as a Libyum, Karak during the wars in the negative on the Levant in the 12th century to secure their uh, occupation of Jerusalem and its surroundings and to be a point of uh, contact between uh, between the, st uh, the strategy and the average of the last showback. Uh, inception dates back to the era of uh, Mubati, uh, of um, Mubiates, 816. The Nabateans used uh, as their RT to escort Nabateen, bases in the first castle, and remind in the Byzantine era, child to the Jordan, uh, were, ref uh, were referred to Madaba uh, Musa, a map among a group castle of this region. <clears throat> it captured the fortress of Karak and Tikham castle creditors uh, in the Levant and played an important role in the conflict, uh, created Muslim in our country and uh, tightened its chop their control. Uh, con uh, show back their control. Uh, on each uh, tract and routes in the uh, in the area east of the Jordan also controlled the movement uh, of of trade and the uh, convoys coming from Egypt and the Arabian uh, Peninsula and the Red Sea to the Levant, Iraq, and prevented any uh, any unity between Egypt and the Levant and formed uh, a threat to the Islamic holy sites uh, in the Hejaz was described uh, by Ibn Fadira uh, age as the uh, Karahama for Hijaz and Islamic. Deliberated by uh, Saladin year uh, um, 584 uh, uh, 1288. She was told by the most famous fort and the prevent. The fort is called the Riven. The valley him from all its sides and has a signal door. In uh, entrance might be carving it in hard rock. Transformed the castle, uh, the castle to the archaeological museum since 1980. Uh, the effect of uh, ex uh, exposure of Muslims in the Ottoman and the Mamluk period. And the Museum of uh, Nisilic and the Bronze Age and Iron Age and collection of archaeological pieces of uh, Moab, uh, Napatia, Romania, Byzantine, and the, uh, uh, the Museum uh, rebound to the public in January 2004. Man. I see that uh, you have a, a picture of King Hussein behind you. Could you tell us a little bit about your, your king, please?
What? What, what? Uh, I was saying, I, I see that you have a picture of your king right behind your flags. Yes. Can you tell us a little yes. bit yes. About, about your king, please? Yes. This picture? Mm -hmm. Yes. King Abdullah. King Abdullah. King Abdullah. Yeah. And uh, the, re the reason I, I was asking, because I see his father over here, and you have quite a few historical pieces. I, I was just wondering if you, uh, what were the pictures? The, the, whole, the whole room looks full of uh, very nice historical pieces. Is the Kingdom room? Is the Kingdom room Hashmi? In my school? Mm hmm. Wow. We have. This is a history of. Yeah, we're, we're kind of breaking up there, but that's very, very beautiful, and that's in the middle of your school, correct? Well, I think we've lost the audio there for a second, but uh, that's a very beautiful museum that you, that you have there. Books? I'm sorry, go ahead. This is a book from... Uh, small museum in the school. Museum in the school? In yeah. School. And I was going to... Uh, I don't know, this may sound kind of weird, but uh, my relatives uh, lived in uh, that castle that you were talking about today during the, the crusade, so... Uh, it's very it's very interesting to hear more about that. So that, I thought that was very appropriate. We are going to be joined now. Thank you very much, um, Jordan. We're going to be joined by another school in Jordan who's going to talk to us about Petra. So if we can mute here and go to uh, the other school, let's go ahead. Go. Can you hear me? Can you hear We can hear you fine. We can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah. We had some technical problems, but now we can see you and we can talk. Okay. Uh, we are Khan Jama'a School. I'm Safa al We are a teacher in this school. Uh, we are from Amman, Jordan. The capital of Jordan. Our school is in the capital of Jordan, in Amman. We are interested, our, our students are interested in intercultural awareness projects. My students are going now to talk about Petra, which is an important site in Jordan. Uh, we'll start with the Dana. Come on, Dana. My name is Dora Aisi. Uh, I'm going to tell you about Petra. Uh, Petra is one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's Jordan. It's 8,000. I think we had some problems. Go ahead, keep it going, please. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Go ahead. Excuse me, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you fine. Okay, can <clears throat> They were they were in stone. Uh, we had 
to the high place of sacrifice above Basra, uh, and the theater seating uh, 8,000 people to the mountain. Um, hello, my name is Dana. Um, I also want to say that uh, we have to maintain Petra um, because it represents the great heritage origin. Um, also, um, it has been a UNESCO, also it has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1985 and it was by Smithsonian Magazine as one of the 28 places to visit before you die. Um, another day, due to the color of red soil. Thank you. Hello, this is Yasmin. Okay, this uh, site, uh, Petra, uh, was lost for a thousand years and was rediscovered in 1812 AD. Okay, uh, and the were very skilled traders. Uh, they traded with China, India, and the Far East. Uh, with Egypt, Syria, and Greece. Nebuchadnezzar really was uh, uh, ruled by royal families, uh, and there were no slaves. Thank you. Hello, this is Rahir. I want to tell you all that leads you to the city of Petra and it's a natural uh, geological path. Uh, the city is a very narrow road, stands between 91 uh, to 182 meters, and it's high, uh, 800, 600 feet high. Um, the entrance of the sea contains a huge um, dam, uh, which Nabataeans uh, use to collect water. And uh, in the old days, the sea was an important trade line. Thank you. Um, my name is Sarah, hello, and I'm going to talk about the treasury. It was named the treasury because the Bedouins used to believe that the urn called um, at the top contained great treasure. Um, however, in reality, it, the urn represented a, a memorial for real, uh, royalty. Uh, uh, from a lot of the threats, including collapse of the ancient structure, rainwater drainage, weathering from salt, unsustainable tourism. Go ahead, Jordan. Finish, please. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm back to the th uh, threat. I was talking about... Un okay. I was uh, talking about the threat. Uh, it was unsustainable tourism, which has increased since this year, coverage in 2007. And uh, thank you. Um, hi. And an attempt to reduce this impact but my national trust was established in 19, uh, in 1989. Uh, over the time, it, uh, it has worked together with a lot of local and international organizations on projects that promote the, uh, the protection, conservation, and the best website. Um, hello, my name is Joel. Um, Bitra is also a main topic for so many poems and plays, such as uh, the poem Bitra for John Williams, uh, who awarded to the uh, New DJ uh, Prize in 1845. And also in 1977, he uh, wrote a musical about the Victoria uh, that uh, responds to the Civil War. Uh, that's all, but now we're going to show you our PowerPoint about Victoria that we have prepared already. Uh, it's some pictures of Victoria and, uh, and the Sikh. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I believe you're going to show some pictures, then we'll go to the uh, Czech Republic when you're done with the pictures. In the meantime, it looks like uh, the other Jordan school is showing us all around their school, which is really amazing. That museum is fantastic. Thank you. Next time we have video conference, I'd sure like to just have video conference where you show your whole museum. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Uh, go ahead and run it. Excuse me, can you see the screen? Yes, it looks beautiful. Thanks a lot. Go ahead. Okay, it's one of the seven wonders of the world. Okay, this is the sea. Uh, it's the main road leading to the Bitra. This is some pictures. This is the tomb. This is the treasury. Uh, this is the theater. Uh, this is the court. Yeah. Uh, this is the silk tomb. This is the palace tomb, the monastery. Um, these are some pictures for picture at night. It's really wonderful with all the lights and the candles. So, yeah. We hope you like it and please come to visit us in Jordan and see Petra. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. That was very beautiful. A, a very a very good job on both the schools. Uh, we experienced a little bandwidth problems from you, but I appreciate you hanging in there, and you did a very wonderful job. I'd like to tell the other Jordan School that I'd love to just do one with just the museum because uh, that museum is has got some fantastic history in there, so uh, we could do that. Now we're getting close to the end of time here, so we need to go back to the Czech Republic, and the Czech Republic has got some more presentations to do. Czech Republic. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, this room in my school is very uh, beautiful, and uh, my students very love it because it is uh, tell him about the uh, many many years old of the kingdom history, kingdom Hashimi history. And it's very, uh, my student and uh, make it uh, by uh, uh, books, uh, pictures, images, and very uh, materials uh, like uh, uh, and we thank thank you thank you very much and let's go to the Czech Republic then please uh, no, no, it's uh, to school. It's uh, just for students and another student from another school uh, come to visit my uh, school, work in another uh, uh, project 
we saw this uh, room. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, for all. So can we start? Go ahead, please. Uh, but uh, the Jordan has has, has to uh, turn off the presentation. I'm then. trying to do that right now. We we are two schools. Right. Uh, we are from the uh, north, from uh, Karak, and another school from Amman. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. From Amman. Right. We just had to get the other schools off, screen off the second. They're going to be back in. Thank you. Thank you. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, and I can ask if we can get the presentation from Jordan. Uh, we c if you can send it to us, and we will send you the the hours. Yeah, I, I, I'm also recording all this, so we we should have we should have both ways. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Honza, and I will tell you some interesting information about a village called Holashovice. Holashovice is a small village near České Budějovice. In this village, there are truly beautiful baroque houses from 19th century. That is the reason why it has been inscribed in World Heritage List. The village itself has been established in the 13th century, but at this time it didn't look the way as it looks in the present. It has changed throughout the history. Here you can see some pictures of Holashovice. It's a really nice place. In Holashovice, there live only about 140 inhabitants. The villagers live there an ordinary, ordinary life, and they are not much affected by the fame of this place. In this village, there are 120 buildings, and 23 of them are historically protected. Around Holashovice, there are more remark remarkable buildings, which are not re registered as culture sites. For instance, the former school, which is used today as the, informa as the information center. And I pass my microphone to my friend. Uh, hello, I'm technical support of my team. And my name is Václav Seri, and I would I would like to uh, tell you some information about Kromniřiš. Krom, Kromniřiš is an old Moravian city located in the southeast of the Czech Republic. It was found in 1260 next to the river Morava by the Bishop of Moravia. In the historical center, there is the Archbishop Castle. The castle was built in the 17th century in the Baroque style. Castle interiors are decorated and equipped, equipped with ori original furniture. The castle is soon on, sur surrounded by large gardens, most of them in English, English style, but one part, the flower garden, was designed in early Baroque style. The place with plenty of ornamental beds is a real Baroque jewel surrounded by peaceful countryside, packaged with ponds and unspoiled nature. Kromniřiš was inscribed in the UNESCO World Cultural and Heritage List in 1998. 
Schritt zu weit gehen. Uh, and this picture is flower gardens. And here is one of the castle garden in English in English style. Uh, thank you for your attention and this is all from me. Hi, my name is Margaret and I will introduce you to town called Kutná Hora. Uh, I know it could be maybe hard to understand, but if you have a question or you don't understand, then ask. I will try to explain it or say it different. So, we don't have a special English name for this medieval town, but for example in German it is Gutenberg, as it used to be a German town. The first mention of this town comes from the 13th century. It is located not far from Prague and there used to be a large silver mines. They brought the town fame and wealth. The Gothic Sons Barbara's Cathedral has graced this town for over 600 years. The Cathedral na Nebezetí Pani Marie is also known as the Temple of Light. That's because of the massive Gothic stained glass windows making a play of light. Both the cathedrals are outsider as well as it might richly decorated. Another interesting place in this town is so-called Kostnice. It is a part of a church and cemetery complex. People who like scary moments should definitely visit this underground chapel where bones of dead people were stored after the old cemetery. Did you see the skills? Skulls? Skulls. Yes, we can see the skulls pretty easy. I assume those are bones as well next to them. What, do you have a question or? Yeah, I, I was going to ask him, are, are those bones that are next to the skulls? Yes, yes, of course. And there's all from the fallen people. I will pass the microphone, so thanks. Hi guys, my name is Eliška and I'm going to tell you something about microregion Lednice Valtice area, which is located in South Moravia, the ancient principality of the Liechtensteins. The Liechtensteins were an old Austrian dynasty. They inherited the castle Lednice in 1249. They really cared about their new home. And in the following two centuries, they brought their domains to perfection. Uh, which is confirmed by the fact that in 1996, the, all the Liechtenstein's principality was inscribed in the World Cultural Heritage List. Uh, and it was actually a large park surrounding Chateau Lednice, which was their favorite. They treated carefully the unique park surrounding the chateau. In 19th century, the park became a location of other architectural jewels, such as, uh, uh, sorry, now you can see the Chateau Lednice here. And uh, uh, in the other picture, there is the interior of Chateau with uh, the carvings in the wood. Uh, so I will follow. Uh, so I told that it was actually a large park surrounding the Chateau. And in 19th century, uh, the park became a location of other architectural jewels, such as Minaret, uh, John's Castle, 
Ne. Uh, yeah. Such as a minaret, John's castle. Um, riding hall or the beautiful church of Chateau. Uh, and um, on the other picture you can see Chateau Valtice, which uh, was also part of the ancient principality. It became uh, it became uh, a part of Liechtenstein's property in um, 1387. The Liechtenstein also built uh, some copies of uh, famous Roman monuments, like uh, the sculpture of Free Graces, Apollo's Temple Aqueduct, or Belvedere, and uh, the other monuments like that. Uh, and what is also very interesting, the interior of Chateau Lenice is very renowned and popular. The visitors definitely love it. The Liechtensteins um, really cared about uh, the loved art. All the rooms are uh, for all the rooms are furnished um, very spectacularly, but it's still tasteful. And uh, the Liechtensteins also loved art, so the rooms are very comfortable and uh, the paintings on the walls are very impressive. The people come from all around the world to visit this almost magical place and to enjoy the romantic atmosphere. Uh, for example, the, for, the, for the weddings or things like that, for some celebrations. So that's all from me, if you, if you don't have any questions. Do you? Anyone have any questions? Just unmute and ask a question. Uh, so, okay, that's, so I will pass the microphone. Okay, thank you. So this is end of, this is the end of our presentation. Thanks for your attention and we appreciate that we have a chance to have a video conference with you. Do you have any question for the end or we should just go? without any question? <laughs> well, unfortunately, to try to keep under time, I, I kind of put a lot of the people on mute. So let's unmute everyone and uh, let's see if there's any questions. All right. Any questions for anyone? Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I take that there, there aren't any questions. Uh, we'll go ahead and try to... Uh, we were going to have a dance on our part, but I think the time won't permit it, so we'll try to do it next time. And we sure do appreciate everyone here uh, participating and uh, all the, all the uh, hard work and effort that you put in. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have a mock trial with... Uh, Taiwan and when the, the, the lady that's from the Ukraine is going to be our judge. So that'll be kind of an interesting deal too. But I'll, I'll email you a copy of the recording today. And I will also try to see if we can set up another one because uh, I thought this was really a uh, very, very good job. So I appreciate it on everyone's part and thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Goodbye. Uh, Michael? Michael? Yes. Uh, can I have a word, please? Go ahead. Uh, uh, okay, so I would say that the conferences are better and better. But uh, what I appreciate is ever uh, the presentation for the better understanding. So for the next rounds, we could agree on the fact that everyone would bring a presentation if 
if it is possible, it's fine, because I see my students that then they are able to understand better and hope that our presentation helped uh, the other students to understand more, right? Because the students have different stresses, uh, intonation, etc., which may bring them some misunderstanding. And if they see the presentation or see the pictures, etc., so they can pick up what the, uh, their counterparts are talking about, right? right? Yeah. Nevertheless, thank you a lot. Thank you a lot. Thank you so much. We'll see you later.